But Fred Katz also spoke about Obi Toppin and some of his characteristics, even though he's a power forward, how he sort of kind of shed the same skin as a guard when it comes to his characteristics. You guys check it out. So Obi Toppin is a power forward. And if we think about positions, then we think, okay, the Knicks are losing a power forward and they're bringing in a shooting guard. However, let's think about the way the Knicks used Obi Toppin. He hung out in the corner. And I'm not going to moralize on what was the right decision, wrong decision, whether he was handled right, wrong, whatever. That's up to, that's up to everybody listening. But he hung out in the corner. Half his shots were threes. He was a catch and shoot option. They rarely used him in pick and rolls. They rarely used him as a roll man. He would cut if a defender fell asleep on the backside every once in a while. Uh, and they, he'd get out in transition and be really good in transition. If we talk Sorry. about positions, they are losing a power forward and gaining a shooting guard. But if you talk about basketball traits, like Obi Toppin had a ridiculously low offensive rebounding rate for a guard. The things that he did on the court, stand still, shoot threes, sometimes cut, get out in transition, didn't guard the paint defensively. They didn't. And he definitely did not guard the paint defensively. Oh man, I love my boy Obi. Repping the city, man, out of Bushwick, Brooklyn. But yeah, if you look at the Miami Heat series, Bam got way too many inside the paint baskets, man. Uncontested. Just he just laid the ball up. He just he just got in the lane too many times without even being touched. I mean, if you go back to my game uh breakdown of the Heat series, you'll see that a lot, particularly when uh Tibbs made his substitutions. Yeah, but there was no reason why Bam had like 20 points or like 17 points by the first half. And majority of those buckets was him getting in the lane just untouched. Uh, he'd get lost when he was down low on the block a lot, having to be like, you know, a help side defender. He'd be late and whatever. So like size in basketball is not actually important. I'm going <laughs> to. It's not about size. It's about how you use it. And you can be 6'9", but top in, and he may play more like a 6'9 guy with the Pacers, but with the way that the Knicks used him and with the way that he played, and I think he's got a ton of potential, and I think he could be in for a really good season in Indiana. Uh, but he didn't play like a 6'9 power forward. That was not the production of a 6'9 power forward. It was the production of somebody else, which means they might be somebody else, that somebody else with a different skill set might be better fitted for the role that he was in. Like... You can walk into a 3% offensive rebound rate. You can walk into that. So it is what it is. I mean, I'm going to shoot Obi some build. He did evolve because Tibbs needed him to shoot. He did improve his three-point shot a lot. But I'm telling you, the Knicks are doubling down on Tibbs because they're getting guys that kind of fit his characteristics. And Tibbs needed someone to protect the paint, get offensive boards. And it seems like Obi was definitely not that guy. And it kind of makes sense of why the Knicks need that because obviously we don't have shooters like that. And that's how we can kind of counteract just us not having that sort of availability to make shots. It's just having guys crash the boards and on defensive end to protect the paint. Like I said, you guys can go back to my uh, game breakdown of last year's playoffs. I mean, all six games, you'll see uh, when Obi was in along with that second unit, Bam had a bunch of uncontested layups. So it is what it is. I wish Obi the best. Hopefully, you know, he plays well, gets his money in Indiana, and we'll see the verdict if, you know, if he's still not defending in the paint and if he's still not grabbing boards on the offensive end.